Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, the battle of the $90 large tower coolers, Be Quiet's Dark Rock Pro 4 versus Noctua's NHD 15, now available in Chromex Black Edition for $10 more than the non-black version. In today's video, I'm going to show you how well these coolers cool a 5 gigahertz Intel CPU. I'm going to talk about their ease of installation or lack thereof, which one I would personally purchase after having used both of them on multiple installations, both Intel and AMD. This used to actually be on my AMD test bench before it got installed in here and then replaced with the Noctua so I could do a comparison video. And then I'm going to talk about how to spend less money than these cost because you may not need either one of them. First things first, the test bench. Well, not really a test bench, but a test build. This is the December 2019 Intel i7 9700KF sponsored build that I did way back in December of 2019. The full build video of this, which was done as a live stream, is on the channel, and you'll find that linked down in the video description below. But this video is not about this, it's just, it's what I used in order to test these two coolers. If you look really closely, you'll see that the Noctua is currently installed, but it was built originally with the Be Quiet. I've spent some time using the machine with both installed, and if you watch the original live build, then you already know something about what I'm about to tell you which is these both cool very well. And if all you care about is their cooling performance, spoiler alert, they're both great and wonderful and fine. And it doesn't make any difference whatsoever which one you buy if cooling performance is the only metric by which you measure. Now, this does not mean that they are exactly the same when it comes to cooling performance. However, the way you install it, either horizontally or vertical, because it does go both ways, um, how your case airflow is, how well you mount it to the actual CPU, how much thermal paste you use, the ambient temperature in your room, the variances between coolers, the manufacture of the metal and the speed of the fans and a few other things, all of those are going to affect cooling performance by a little bit. Not huge amounts, but the small difference in performance between these coolers can easily be reversed based upon the fact that your two coolers will be physically different coolers, even though they're the same model, there are manufactured items, so there's small variances, and your case design and the airflow in your case will be different than mine, unless you build exactly the same machine. So I would like to just stop right here and say that for all practical purposes, the effective cooling performance between the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 and the Noctua NHD 15 is, give or take, as much as it doesn't matter, the same. So video done, there's the answer, right? Well, hold on, we have a few more things to say. The installation mounting system. I mentioned before that the Dark Rock Pro 4 have been installed on my AMD test bench. This is an open air test bench where you have access to all the way around the motherboards on top. Installation is easy, no problem. It was on my Ryzen 7 uh, 2700X on my X470 motherboard. Wasn't too hard to install, cooled wonderfully, is very quiet. They did name the company correctly. Be Quiet is a very well-named company. They make some of the best fans in the business in terms of performance per unit of of noise output. I really do like them. However, that installation was perhaps easier than it first appeared because of the open air test bench, because you can access every single bit of it easily. There's no case. If you watch the live stream of my building this computer, that was awful. Trying to get this cooler into this case was an unpleasant experience to say the least. I managed to make it worse, but make it work but there was some, shall we say, colorful metaphors and complaining in the process. Thank you to all of you who watched the live stream of that build. And even then, it wasn't perfect. It really was a struggle to get in there. Now, let me say up front, this is a pure base 500. And it's really not the case to buy if you're buying a 90 tower tower cooler. In fact, the Dark Rock Pro 4 costs more than the case does. A, a, a dark base 700 might be the minimum you might want to consider from Be Quiet to put this kind of cooler in. It really is not enough case. A larger case would make more sense. It's just 
what I had when I did the build. Uh, you could also use the Cooler Master H500 or H500P, which is a larger case. It's wider and taller with more clearance, and you'd find installing either of these coolers in a larger case to be easier than trying to stuff them into a really small case. As far as mounting goes, well, I took this out and I put the Noctua in. Now, I actually own three different Noctua NHD15s, two of the older version with the brown fans and this sexy new black version, which they just sent me. Thank you, Noctua. Noctua makes by far the easiest mounting systems in the business. Having now used Cooler Master, Corsair, having used Be Quiet, Noctua, having used, shall we say, some cheap, smaller companies that I won't bother mentioning at the moment, the, the inexpensive ones you find for 20 and 30 bucks. Noctua makes really, really good cooler mounting systems. And mounting this NHD15 into this case was substantially easier, not completely trouble free. It was still a very tight fit. It was still, it's still the wrong cooler for this case, but it was much easier due to its better motherboard mounting system. Actually, I've now reviewed several Noctua coolers. I did their U9, I did the 12, I've done, well, now the 15 here. And of course, I've shown this on my Intel test bench numerous times in many other videos. One of the brown versions of the NHD15 is on my i9-9900K test bench, and of course, it runs cool and quiet and has no issues whatsoever at five gigahertz. But man, oh man, oh man, is the difference in mounting difficulty between these two night and day. Be quiet. I do like your products. I like how quiet your case is. Your Silent Wings 3 fans are amazing. Your mounting system sucks and you need to fix it. There's just new two ways about it. After using it in a case, I wouldn't want to do it twice. So basically, copy Noctua's mounting system, use your Silent Wings 3 fans, and you have got a winning combination. Having said that, you may not need either one of these. I'm running a 5 gigahertz overclocked CPU, and in that case, you probably do want this level of cooling. But if you're running that CPU at stock speeds and you're not worried about 5 gigahertz overclocking, you can save a bunch of money and go with something like this. This is a Hypermaster 212 Black Edition. They're about $35, give or take, and it has four direct, heat pipe, uh, direct contact heat pipes so it does not have the same cooling performance as either of these, far from it. This is not going to run an Intel chip at five gigahertz. It's not gonna run a Ryzen 9 3950X at 4.2 gigahertz on all the cores. It doesn't have enough cooling power. But at stock speeds, it'll run a Ryzen 7 3700X, even with PBO turned on just fine. It'll run an i7 9700KF at stock speeds just fine. And it costs less and it's much, much easier to install. So if you're going with stock performance, you might be able to avoid these completely and just go with one of these. Unless your room is not air conditioned or you just want your CPU to last basically forever and you want super low temperatures. Because at stock speeds, you're gonna knock 10, 15 degrees off of what I'm about to show you in the benchmark charts uh, coming up very soon with the uh, temperatures of these things. But you'll be able to knock 10 or 15 C off of that at stock speeds and your CPU will be running so cool, it'll probably last forever uh, given that improvement in temperatures. Having said that, modern CPUs can run up to about 100 degrees C before they start to thermal throttle and neither of these thermal throttle. So in terms of temperatures, they're, it's fine. It just runs warm which might say as much about Intel as it says about the coolers, but we won't go there. One final thought before we get to the actual benchmarks themselves, let me talk to you about AMD. I mentioned AMD just a second ago. Cooling CPUs, the AMD CPUs and the Intel CPUs have basically the same size integrated heat spreader. The actual die underneath might be a different size, but that doesn't matter anymore because all modern CPUs have a heat spreader on top of it. That's what you attach your cooler to. They didn't used to 20 years ago. You had to be careful not to chip your CPU, but that was a long time ago. Because of that, if the CPUs use the same amount of electricity, they will, in general, there's some variance, but in general, they will produce the same amount of heat that has to be dissipated by the cooler. These are not rocket science, folks. All they're doing is basically putting copper heat pipes that are very good for the transmission of thermal energy directly into contact with the integrated heat spreader. The heat moves into them and moves along the heat pipes, which is then put out to the various radiators, which the fan then blows air on, and then it dumps the heat into your room. Spoiler alert, 
Liquid coolers work exactly the same way. They just swap the solid copper heat pipes for liquid. There is a copper plate which water runs over the top of and absorbs the heat from. That water runs through tubes and it runs through a radiator. The heat transfers from the liquid to the radiator and then fans blow over the radiator to dissipate the heat to your room. They work basically the same. These are all radiators and whether they're air cooling or liquid cooling, the principles are largely the same. Modern Intel CPUs such as the i7 and i9 that you see right here use about 100 watts when you're gaming. They can use far more if you run A to 64 stress tests, Prime 95, if you're pushing them to the max with synthetic loads, you can push 130 to 150 watts, especially out of that i9 with hyperthreading turned on. But that's not typical load that you're going to see out of your own machine unless you're doing a very specialized workload that's not gaming. The same is true of AMD CPUs. Typical load of say a Ryzen 9 3900X, for example, is gonna be about 100 watts, maybe 110 or a bit more. But a Ryzen 9 3900X will do 140 to 150 watts under an A to 64 load with all the options checked, just like the Intel chips will. Although it'll run a bit cooler because that seven nanometer chip is a little bit more efficient and it's frankly a more modern design than Intel's chips, but don't tell Intel I said that. Either way, under typical loads that you would expect, you can expect to use about 100 watts of power out of any of these AMD and Intel chips, which means the temperatures I'm about to show you will be similar, a little bit lower on AMD, but similar with either of these coolers, whether you pick premium chips from either side. And the same is true of lower end coolers and the same is true of liquid coolers. I am speaking in general here, however, I have installed both tower and liquid coolers on even our Ryzen 9 3900 and 3950X. AMD says that you need liquid cooling for that 3950X. No, you don't, but that's a topic for another story. We'll cover that in a future video. In any case, I've talked for entirely way too long. Let's take a look at some benchmarks, shall we? Ghost Recon Breakpoint is providing our temperature testing today, at least in terms of on-screen dynamic testing. This benchmark uses a lot of CPU power, and I did run the benchmark multiple times, as I always do whenever I benchmark. I never even bother recording the first run. The first run of every game that I do is a warm-up run. It loads the game into RAM and disk cache. It gets the CPU and the graphics card up to speed. So whenever I'm benchmarking, I just go ahead and start the benchmark, and I just ignore it for the first one and then I run it a couple more times to make sure that I'm getting consistent performance. This will have been probably run three or four. Uh, I record different ones and then keep the one that is most in line with typical performance. So sometimes I keep the third one, sometimes I keep the fifth one. It just depends on how well they run. But I do look at multiple results. The Dark Rock Pro 4 is on the left-hand side of the screen and the Noctua NHD 15 is on the right. MSI Afterburner is reporting the real-time performance numbers, including the clock speed, power consumption, temperature, and CPU usage of our i7-9700KF. Let me be abundantly clear. This is the same motherboard, same Windows install, same MSI Afterburner installation, same everything, exact same components, except the cooler. The graphics card, the RAM, everything is absolutely identical between these two runs. The only difference is I took the Dark Rock Pro 4 off, put the Noctua NHD 15 on, and then ran the benchmark. So the method by which it's reading the temperature from the CPU is consistent insofar as it's the same platform. If you're watching this and you say, well, I get different temperatures or mine looks different, you might have a different motherboard. You might have a different version of MSI Afterburner. It may be reported a bit different. The thing is, Across platforms, you can't always count on the reporting being exactly the same unless you're using external hardware thermocouples to directly measure the CPU temperature, which would be ideal, but takes obviously more time and equipment than I have. So we're using the reporting that comes through software. We are between 70 to 80% CPU usage in most of this. Notice the temperatures are pretty consistent. In fact, it hit 100% on both sides there at different times. 
we're pretty consistent in the 70 degrees centigrade range here. The Intel chips are good up to about 100 degrees C. You really don't want to go over 90 to improve their life. Something in this high 60s, low 70s is fine. These temperatures do not bother me. If you're watching this going, is this a concern? No. And you'll also notice that the temperatures are pretty similar. There's no recording me mechanism here to record the temperatures, but it is pretty similar between the two coolers. Welcome back. Two gold stars for all of you who sat through all of this video to this point. Thank you so much. As you can see in front of me, I've added a couple of boxes, including the previous generation Dark Rock Pro 3, and you can see some other boxes here from my other NHD 15s. These are all great coolers, and if you don't mind the fact that the Be Quiets have a more complicated and difficult mounting system than the Nocta was, by all means, it's a well, very well-designed cooler. It's built well, it's machined well, it's engineered well, the fans are spectacular. It's just a pain to install. Whether or not that matters to you is a personal decision. The Noctuas are just easier and they all cool very, very similar. Now, I do have a couple of additional follow-up points. If you look really closely inside the case here, you might notice something. Those fans are not what the Noctua came with. What's installed in here is not this black uh, cooler, even though it looks like they're black fans. This is still in the box. I installed one of these, one of the brown versions. However, the width of this case and where the RAM is installed does not actually provide enough Z-depth room to install the second 140 millimeter fan. It actually ran out of room here and it would have bumped into the side. Not to worry, I have extra 120 millimeter Noctua fans on the shelf. These are the new Chromax black fans. So I simply installed one of those instead. The little adapters work just fine to stick it on there. And while I was at it, I went ahead and replaced both of them with 120 millimeter fans. So the numbers you just saw for the Noctua were not straight stock because they were not using the 140 millimeter fans they were coming with. They're using 120 millimeter fans you will get slightly better cooling out of the 140 millimeter fans. But do keep in mind that those fans do overstretch the cooler a little bit in terms of size. It's not gonna be a huge difference. It's more of a sound difference than anything else due to fan speeds. Now I'm also using the low noise adapters and it's right at this point, somebody's about to look at the screen and go, wait a minute. You're not using the fans it comes with. You're using the low noise adapters to change the RPM. This is not a fair test. It's rigged. Rigged in what way? I just told you that I recommend the Noctua NHD 15 due to its ease of installation. And it's handicapped with smaller fans and low noise adapters. And I still think it's better. And if you just watch the numbers, you'll notice it cools just as well. Maybe even a little bit better than the Dark Rock Pro 4, which was installed. The Dark Rock Pro 4 comes with 140 millimeter and one 120 millimeter fan, not two 140s, which is part of the reason it fits. The clearance issues with the D15 are an issue because it has two 140s. So in the interest of full disclosure, those were the changes that I made. And this is how I plan to keep this machine because this is my new personal gaming machine to replace my old i7. 8700K, which I built two and a half years on the channel. That was the old 2000 r Cadillac build. Uh, that was in a Cooler Master case and a bunch of other parts that have since been changed. But that's being replaced by this because, well, I have a YouTube channel and I can. What can I say? In any case, if I had anything to change on this build, it would be a larger case. It would be a dark base uh, 700 instead of the pure base 500 for the level of components that went into it. And maybe at some point I'll rebuild it into a larger case, but taking it apart and undoing all the cable management and rearranging the components is not a trivial task. And at the moment, this machine runs cool and quiet and plays games just fine. And so I pro will probably leave it as is for some time. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, I'm sure there will be a few down there. That's what the comment section is for. Let me know what other coolers you would like to see tested. Would you like to see them tested in this? Would you like to see them tested on my open air test bench? What do you want to see them compared against? I am looking forward to all of your comments down there. Links, of course, in the video description to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay to all of these coolers and a variety of things. And the playlist on this build 
If you want to go back and watch the joy and fun I had in trying to stick this cooler in there, by all means, it was a 20-minute endeavor. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.